Welcome to episode four of Positively Geared. My name is Alex Augustiniak, and in today's episode, we will be discussing the Dream Team. The Dream Team is the team which Lloyd attributes to successfully building a portfolio of properties. They are the professionals you will need in your corner who are working for you constantly in the background to ensure that you have all the tools you need to succeed. Welcome, Lloyd. Hi, Alex. So today on this episode, we're going to cover off on a very exciting chapter of your book in Positively Geared. Uh, It's called The Dream Team. Yes, looking forward to talking about it. So what is exactly The Dream Team? Uh, The Dream Team is what I refer to as the group of professionals who you should involve yourself with uh, around the purchase of a property. And why is this group of individuals so crucial and important to the purchase? When you purchase a property, Alex, it's not just about one, uh, you know, one professional. It's not just about the mortgage broker or the accountant. There's a number of people that are involved in the purchasing of a property. So in the book, you obviously do a deep dive into all these individuals, but off the cuff, uh, can you give us a walkthrough and our listeners on who these people are and, and what their role is in the process? Uh, yeah, well, I think from my perspective, the the first person uh, in the process uh, is really the buyer's agent uh, who's going to be helping source you the property and everything like that. Not everybody necessarily is going to be using a buyer's agent and uh, we discuss uh, buyer's agents through this series anyway, so we won't go into too much detail about that at the moment. Uh, so um, beyond that, uh, the very first person you should really be talking to is a mortgage broker. Uh, I recommend seeing a mortgage broker over just going straight to the bank. A mortgage broker is the person that's going to be getting you the finance for the property. Uh, a broker has access to uh, up to 30 or so different lenders and can find you finance for your best needs uh, as opposed to just going to the bank who and they're going to just offer you uh, you know, their, their solution basically. Uh, it's really important to make sure that you know what your numbers are before you, uh, you, know, before you go and hunt down your property and everything like that. After you've got your numbers, then the next person to actually see uh, would be the accountant. Uh, the accountant's going to advise you on trusts and entities, buying entities, uh, what you should be, uh, how you should be buying the property, whether you're going to be buying your individual name, whether you should be uh, buying in a, you know, in a, a discretionary trust, for example, uh, whether you should be buying in a, in, a, in a company trust. They'll be advising you on, on tax implications and, and everything like that. So that's very important to have that conversation before you go sourcing the property. So all this is before you even source the property. Uh, another person that's very important uh, is the solicitor uh, or the conveyancer. Uh, so a solicitor, they facilitate the purchase. So they look at the, the contracts, uh, make sure that uh, everything in the contract is okay. Uh, if there's anything in the contract of the sale that isn't so great, they'll negotiate that with the other side, which is the vendor solicitor, and do any negotiations on that side of it. So they're probably the more obvious um, people within the purchasing equation uh, that you cover often in the in the book. There are a few others though, um, which aren't as obvious. And and I guess as part of your role as a buyer's agent, you're very diligent about every aspect of the purchase process. Uh, who are those other people that you work with and form part of the dream team okay so once we've identified a property and from my perspective we might look at 30 40 50 properties for a client before we actually identify one we actually want to buy but once we get to that process uh, and that stage of actually buying a particular property then a very important thing to do is actually get it checked out by a building and pest inspector and that's to make sure that the property doesn't have any um, building faults or any termites in the property because you don't want to find that's got major issues uh, after you've bought the property, because that can be very expensive and 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 you know affect issues later on in terms of growth and and rent and things like that. So that's uh, that's a very that's very important as well. Uh, it's also important to get insurance on the property. So I like to involve a short insurance company or an insurance rep uh, who can get you landlord's insurance uh, for your property that which will cover uh, you know the building insurance and also any loss of rent and and things like that uh, and. A quantity surveyor who's going to be able to uh, work out the depreciation and do a depreciation schedule that you'll be able to claim on tax as well. So going back to the insurance for for properties, is that something that you would recommend to all your clients for an investment property? Having is it is it necessarily 
Um, rental protection insurance is it overall insurance as a landlord in case tenants do damage a property? Yes, it is landlord's insurance is what I'd recommend there. Uh, and you should be covered so that you are covered for if the tenants damage your property and also if there's um, any loss of rent uh, in case the you know the tenants sort of uh, clear out uh, had not haven't paid any rent. While you do have a bond that's paid by the tenants, which is basically four weeks in advance, uh, which is supposed to cover some things like that, it's, it's good to have insurance as well. Um, when you're insuring your property, if it's a house, uh, you need to have building insurance there. If it's a strata property, then uh, you're paying strata. So that's actually going to cover the building anyway. So you just need to have um, landlord's insurance, which also covers some of the internal fixtures as well. And just if we can spend a little bit more time on insurance, because I feel as though it's a really important aspect of um, which, which investors need to get very well acquainted with, particularly as portfolios grow and, you know, through the economies of scale, there's going to be a high probability that they're going to encounter issues at some time. Um, what, what should people be looking for in an insurance package? Is there, is there companies that you generally would recommend? Are there ones that you'd want to avoid? Uh, because what we have found is that there'll be, you know, big gaps between one product versus another. And I think people just, you know, often struggle knowing who to go with. Yeah, it's a little bit like finding the best mortgage. Yeah, don't necessarily go with the, like with a mortgage, you don't necessarily go with just the lowest interest rate. You need to go with who's offering the best overall package. And it's the same with an insurance company. Make sure that you actually see everything uh, that they're offering there uh, and make sure that you're actually covered for everything. And it's really important not to under insure yourself because, you know, we all think, oh, nothing's going to happen to our property or whatever, but, you yeah, know, things uh, you know, things can happen and things do happen. So it's really important to to get insured. The other a bit of recommendation uh, that I can give you there also, uh, Alex, is that if you have multiple properties, see if you can get them insured by the same company because you can get a bit of a discount there as well. Uh, what I have seen is a bit of a mistake when people uh, may have, you know, half a dozen properties and they're all insured with different people, different companies. They're not really saving anything on on premiums or anything there so you should be able to bundle them together and and get a few savings and stuff there uh, but there's definitely good reputable companies out there but using an insurance rep means that they a bit like a, a broker so uh, an insurance broker is a bit like a mortgage broker has access to a number of different insurance companies and they should be able to get you a uh, you know some good options to look at rather than just going straight to one insurance company some really good points you make there Lloyd um, I think I think also you know, you made it. You made a good point, uh, which a lot of people may not be aware of. So, strata. If if people are looking to purchase strata title properties, every strata plan will have to be insured. Uh, so, it, I think I think the reason I raise that point with you is that it does really highlight how the dream team all work harmoniously and coexist. In the sense that, you know, a solicitor's role is to do their due diligence, to review strata reports, to ensure that. Uh, you know, insurance policies on strata plans are valid. So, uh, you know, very quickly we can start to see that um, every every uh, professional within the dream team, um, you know, it doesn't work without one or the other. It's really important that you have everybody and that synergy to um, ensure that you're putting yourself in the best position moving forward. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. And and that's a good point. With with a the solicitor, they, they need to actually, one of the things they need to do is actually get that strata report you need to make sure that the property you're buying, if it's a strata building, uh, does have adequate money in its sinking fund, that it's it's not broke. And that also check out whether it's had any major repairs done in recent years because you you don't want to, you know, run the risk of maybe be up for some major levies uh, where, you know, just after you buy the property, you might be paying some major levies for some repairs that are going to be coming up. So that's an important thing the solicitor checks out. Uh, the other thing to, to understand is that some people a bit scared of buying a, a strata property because you've got to pay strata. Uh, and whilst sometimes strata can get quite expensive, it does cover building insurance as well. Because if you buy a house, you still got to pay insurance. So there's a few things there. So when you're looking at your overall numbers, you need to actually consider all those things as well. So on a daily basis, um, who do you find within the dream team you will spend most of your time working with? Or is it more dependent on what property you're looking to acquire for a client? On a daily basis, uh, I, I probably have the most communication with uh, a mortgage broker and probably the solicitor. Uh, the accountant, for example, will advise on something f for the client on probably once, one occasion. 
maybe for each property. So if we're obviously the dream team is is working with the client over the long term, building toward, you know, building up their wealth over the long term, but the accountant, for example, uh, will advise, okay, you should buy this property in this structure and that's it. Uh, the mortgage broker, they're working on the finance. I need to sort of be in touch with them every day, uh, following up to see how their finance is going. Uh, when the solicitor's working on exchange of contracts and then working towards settlement, we're in deep communication there too. So there's a lot of communication that, that goes on there. Uh, the other professionals, you know, the building and pest inspector, you know, that's a job that's done once per property. Uh, and, um, you know, quantity surveyor, they do one report for the property. So they're not people that you do with all the time, uh, you know, in relation to the, the same property. So for people that are possibly not quite at the stage of an, engaging a buyer's agent, um, but are wanting to assemble their own dream team, but also might be looking outside of their you know areas of familiarity, is is there a general rule of thumb that you've used in your past, Lloyd, to sort of seek out the best people in their industries and to ensure that you're uh, assembling the best team possible? I really think that uh, referrals and word of mouth are really important. Uh, you know, you can contact people, you can read reviews and all that kind of stuff, but you really need to work with people that you've, uh, you know, you've had a recommendation by. So what's, what's important though, is that, you know, if you're buying a property in a particular location, you don't actually have to have a professional in that location, as long as they're licensed in that location. Now, for example, if you're buying a property in Brisbane, you need to have a solicitor who has a Queensland license, who's, who's licensed for property law in Queensland, but they can still be Sydney based, for example, uh, a mortgage broker can be based anywhere because a lot of the transactions are done over email and things like that. So, you know, you can be dealing with a mortgage broker in Melbourne and buying a property in Brisbane. Uh, so you don't need to think, oh, I've got to buy a property in, in Brisbane. So I've got to find all these professionals in Brisbane and how am I going to find them? You can put a team of people around you uh, where you are, particularly if you're the sort of people, sort of person who would like to actually go in and, and meet with people face to face, which is often a good thing to do. Uh, if you're based in Sydney, then maybe you know, seek a solicitor in Sydney, seek a broker in Sydney, seek an accountant in Sydney that you can actually meet face to face. But you also want these people to communicate with each other because part of the, the team is that they all communicate with each other in your best interest. So it's not just a matter of you talking to each of these people, but being part of a team is that all those professionals communicate with each other and keep you in the loop. That's the whole thing about the, the dream team. So some good takeaways there. Obviously, where possible, um, you know, assemble assemble a team around you where geographically uh, they could be in close proximity. However, they're also individuals that you feel, um, you know, are going to help you achieve your goals. And and possibly if they've already got some pre-existing relationships, there's already some synergy there that definitely strengthens the bond and strengthens the team. Uh, if you are looking to buy out of area and, for example, you need a building and, and pest inspection done, then it, then you're you know you'd be recommending that you're probably best to seek out these people by word of mouth or referrals as as the strongest source possibly um, beyond doing some independent research online. Yeah, absolutely, and and I do recommend yeah you know, things like Google reviews and and you know re research online, uh, but but also just you know if you can seek out people and social media is good for this. Just seek out people who have bought in that area before and, and find out who they've used before and everything in, in that area because it's a good point with something like building a pest inspector they obviously need to be local so just using as an example if you're buying in brisbane you need to find a company who does building and pest inspections uh, there they, they can get to the property you don't need a mortgage broker or an accountant to be living in brisbane to do all your paperwork or your finance but you do need a building inspector who lives there who can get to the property so uh, that's very important so i guess one of the advantages of using a buyer's agent is that we actually um, you know, not have all the contacts and put that team of people around you. I think that's a really good point. And, uh, you know, in addition to everybody that we've, we've raised um, in terms of all the various professionals that work in, in alignment with you to form the dream team, um, the buyer's agent uh, and being yourself in, in this instance is very much at the, the forefront of everything. Um, you know, you sort of, we, we always touch on strategy and, and the importance of strategy and because you spend so much time driving that strategy and getting everybody onto the same page as to what the client's trying to achieve, um, you know, it's really important to once again highlight the importance of working with somebody like yourself and uh, your ability to pull everyone together, even to give recommendations to people that 
you know, they, they've possibly done their due diligence online, they've had word of mouth advice, but they're still a bit unsure of what avenue to go down. I find, Lloyd, that you're really good at helping people make those decisions and, and you know, almost every single time it's always re- resulted in a positive outcome. Yeah, that, that's really true, Alex. And and the thing is that like, not everybody is going to want to use a buyer's agent and everything like that. But what I recommend to people is that when they're seeking out a team of professionals, that they actually speak to each person they're putting on that team and kind of give them a bit of a interview, a bit of a job interview there and, and try to find out and make sure that those people are all aligned with what you as a client is, is trying to achieve. So people need to be looking at helping you achieve that long-term wealth creation if that's your goal. Uh, it shouldn't be just about transactional, about one one purchase. You don't want a mortgage broker who's just going to get you the loan for one property. Mortgage broker needs to understand and help you understand how you're going to get finance for your second, third and fourth property. The accountant needs to set you up with the right structures so that you can get your next property and the subsequent property after that and so on. It's not just about that first um, property. And when you buy multiple properties, you should be using the same solicitor. So you need people that you can trust and you need to speak to them about that from the outset. That's really important. There's some really good points you raised there, Lloyd. And I think, you know, particularly as, as uh, time passes and you start to grow an investment portfolio, you know, having the same broker that you can refer back to, for example, when it comes time to possibly look at refinancing or seeking new finance for another purchase, having that existing relationship um, is a far stronger position to be in than meeting somebody new for the first time and and having no existing rapport. The individual doesn't have an understanding about, your, your, you know, your past situation, your current situation and what your future situation looks like. Well, that's very true because uh, if you're meeting a a new broker, someone who you haven't used before, then you've got to explain everything to them again and then you've got to submit all your paperwork to them. If you keep going with the same broker, then they've got all your stuff and then you may need to submit updated paperwork. Maybe you need to submit your latest you know, PAYG pay slips or anything like that uh, before you get your latest loan, uh, you know, your new mortgage and stuff like that. But basically the broker has all your information uh, so it's, it's good to get people on your team that has everything on file. It's a bit like your accountant. You know, you send them everything, they have everything on your file. And so get people that you're happy with and then they work with you for the long term so you're not having to then try to start the process again all the time. Sure. And just touching on the accountant, I mean, we discuss across this podcast series and you also cover cover off on this topic in your book, Positively Geared, you know, the importance of having the right structure Um, behind how you purchase the property you know we've touched on different entities and ways to purchase property and we've also identified you know that the the cost of possibly not setting it up right from the get-go can cost you money down the track um, as well as time and stress absolutely yeah uh look it's, it's so important and that's why i say that that conversation with the accountant should be done before you buy the property it's too late once you found the property that you get advice from the accountant and then you decide oh, suddenly you've got to set up a trust so you've got to do this get that advice straight away and find out exactly what you should be doing you know it may not matter to buy your first property in your own names uh, but then if you're looking at a, a long-term property portfolio maybe the accountant is advising to to set things up in a in a trust they'll explain to you why and what the tax implications are and, you know, all, all that's very important because if you buy something in, in one particular entity and then want to, want to change, then what you mean, what that actually means is you've actually got to change, you've basically got to pay stamp duty again because you're going to have to, uh, you're basically selling it from one entity to the other entity. So you've got to get that right from the first place. And it's really important for things like asset protection and there's a lot of things there. So the accountant, the role of the accountant is very important from the get-go. How much of a competitive advantage do you believe having a dream team in in real world terms will give, um, I suppose, in your experience, your own experience personally and professionally and um, for people that are looking to, to, you know, take on board the advice that we're discussing today? Do you, do you think that it really gives you a solid advantage ahead of, you know, the, the average mum and dad investor that's quite unsure about what they're doing and why? Totally, Alex. When I started investing, I always refer to this because I didn't have any strategy in place. I had no dream team. I mean, I had a mortgage broker at the time and I used a conveyancer that was recommended by the mortgage broker. And uh, and then when I bought my next property, I used a different conveyancer and so on. I didn't really have a, you know, all the things that I know now, I didn't know back then. Looking at things now, it's just so important. You know, have that team in place and they do things for you. 
because at the end of the day, you go to work, you do your thing that you're good at, and then you've got professionals around you that are managing your property purchase, that are facilitating everything there. And that really puts you in a, a very good position. As long as they're all cohesive and all working together, and I reiterate that because they must be talking to each other. So when you're communicating, sending emails out, you know, CC everybody in, make sure everybody's in the loop on the same page as what you're trying to achieve. That's really important. And, uh, you know, I can't, can't reiterate that enough. Looking, I suppose, retrospectively back on going from when you were purchasing your first few homes, you know, you just mentioned that uh, you were lacking that dream team at the time. How much more efficient did you find uh, you were in terms of building that portfolio further once you'd assembled that dream team? And, and I mean, for people that are looking to do the same thing uh, and, and really take on board a lot of the advice you give in your book, Positively Geared, did you find that there was a dramatic shift once you had that dream team behind you? Absolutely. And it comes back to what I was saying a little a little while ago. Uh, once I have a good mortgage broker that I'm happy working with, they've got all my details. The solicitor has all my details. Uh, the accountant's got all my details. And basically all I do is send them an email and say I'm um, purchasing another property or I send an email wanting to uh, you know, ask them for some advice uh, and things like that. But they've got uh, all my details on file and it makes it's things are so much more streamlined when you're building a portfolio it is just like running a business it, it is a business and uh, in running a business you need to have other professionals in there and it makes things so much easier than uh than just one transactional purchase where you start from scratch each time so everyone's got things on file one of the absolute benefits that i really think um resonates with me personally it's it's when you have a team, Lloyd, you've also got professionals that are working for you and not necessarily just waiting for you to come to them with instructions. And what I mean by that is, you know, having a mortgage broker that's proactive and calls you up and says, Lloyd, look, you know, there was just another interest rate drop or, you know, CBA or whichever bank's offering a new package. Have you considered, you know, have should we look at refinancing here or should we do something there? Having people around you that are constantly monitoring and, and wanting to see you grow and to see that portfolio perform to the highest of its capabilities. I think that's a big benefit of having a team behind you. Uh, very true, Alex. And a good mortgage broker will do that. Uh, they'll be looking after your you know, your long-term interests with your portfolio. Same with an accountant. Uh, they'll always be feeding you any uh, relevant information that the ATO um, has put out and everything like that. Even you know a good buyer's agent, for example, uh, what we do is we give portfolio health checks every six months to our clients and we uh, we also assess how their most recent property purchase is progressing and everything like that and then give them recommendations for uh, when and if they should be progressing to the next purchase and everything like that. So we're very proactive with things like that. So we don't just sit there waiting for the client to come back wanting to do another purchase because we've already set that strategy in the first place and the clients have given us their long-term goals and uh and we're, we're looking to try to help them achieve that so we're very proactive in making sure that we're getting back to them with with the next steps all the time so lloyd for people listening to this podcast today um that have absorbed all the information and they're now sitting there saying what should we do next what do you suggest uh well i have referenced a lot of this in uh, the book positively geared alex uh, i've talked a lot about uh, strategy and why you should be investing and you know, cover up a lot uh, regarding finance and, and how to pick a good location uh, and how to engage a buyer's agent and, and even a bit about auctions and, and, and a bit about you know, how to manage rental properties and everything like that. So, uh, and I cover up a lot about the, uh, you know, the dream team and, and what they all do in, in a bit more detail in the book than what we've, we've spoken about here. So I think that's probably a good place to, uh, to start with. And I, th I always recommend people do, uh, do some really good research and and obviously, like we've talked about, you need to research each profession you want to put on your team. I do recommend people do think very closely about using a buyer's agent. So you know, maybe do some research on buyer's agents, interview a few buyer's agents and uh, and you know ask them the right questions, what experience they've had and how they're going to be able to assist them, achieve their goals and you know, what sort of uh, property portfolios they have themselves and everything like that. I think that's a very good point. Would you recommend that everybody um, during their process of seeking out a buyer's agent, how important is it that they've done it themselves and can, can substantiate that they've acquired XYZ properties, they've had similar experiences to what the client's trying to achieve? I think it's really important with anything that you're trying to achieve in life 
that you're aligning yourself with someone who's actually done that. So whatever your dreams are, you need to align yourself with someone who's actually achieved those sort of things. So you don't want to be aligning yourself with someone who's just sort of talking. You want to do someone who's actually sort of walked, walked their talk, walked the walk. And that's really important. So if you want to build up a portfolio and achieve some of the dreams, find a buyer's agent who's actually got a substantial portfolio there. Uh, but it's not just about buying property either. It's really about that strategy and how property is going to help you achieve those dreams. It's a really good point, Lloyd, because, I mean, it's one thing to just accrue uh, property after property. But, I mean, if they're not necessarily in high growth or high yield locations, there's no guarantees that in 10, 15 years' time, their net position is going to be any any more superior, isn't it? Well, that's very true. And I actually uh, devote a fair bit of time in the book talking about that because there's no point buying a property in a certain location just because it's cheap and has a high yield if in 10 years' time it's worth the same or even less than what you paid for it. You need to have an understanding of how that property is going to work for you. And, for example, if you've got a limited budget, you know, buying cheaper properties can work for you. But what can you do with that property to add some value to it? And, and you know, there's things like that. You can't just buy a property and hope for the best. Having an understanding of strategy and how that's going to work for you is actually really, really important because not every property you buy is actually going to just go up in value simply because that's what we've been told happens with property. So Lloyd, one of the uh, possibly more important pieces of the puzzle in terms of uh, from an investor's perspective, which we haven't covered off on, uh, however, a very important part of the dream team is a property manager. Do you recommend that people use a property manager? I definitely recommend people use a property manager. What are the main benefits of uh, appointing a property manager as opposed to self-management? So if you're self-managing a property, that means you've got to actually look after uh, the repairs yourself. You've got to collect all the rent. You've got to chase the rent that's late. You've got to deal with tenants if they don't pay at all and um, pot potentially go to the tribunal and everything like that. Property, a good property manager is really worth their weight in gold. So people think that that's um, potentially a you know a waste of money, but it's actually not. It's a again, it's a it's a tax deduction, uh, but it's money well spent. Uh, as long as they they're looking after your property, they'll screen you screen your tenants so you get actually get in the right tenant uh, into your property. Uh, they'll perform routine inspections, and of course you can't really look after your property unless the property is near where you uh, live. And we've covered off the fact that you shouldn't be buying an investment property near where you live. So you get a good property manager in uh, the location that you're investing in. That's very important. What are some of the key services which a property manager can provide to an investor? Uh, well, firstly, a property manager is available to open the home for inspections so they can advertise the property for rent and they can turn up and, uh, and let the prospective tenants through. They can screen the tenants, as I've previously mentioned. Uh, once you've got tenants in place, they will uh, do an ingoing report and an outgoing report, which essentially means that they'll make sure that the, uh, they know what the condition the property is in when the tenants move in there and compare that when the tenants move out. Uh, they also do routine inspections uh, you know, through the course of the tenancy uh, to make sure that the tenant's looking after the, the property correctly. Uh, it's easier for the, the property manager to chase uh, rent that's in arrears than if you're trying to do it yourself. And as I previously mentioned, uh, you really can't do this if you geographically live a long way away from where your investment property is. When we look at the concept of a dream team, part of assembling this team is that we're relying on the vast experience that each individual has in their uh, profession. Now, with, with a property manager, one of the greatest benefits, Lloyd, is that with their experience, they're also going to ensure that they're putting forward the correct tenants for you to um, review before you do accept a tenancy application, which generally speaking is the first step in ensuring that there's no problems down the track. Yeah, absolutely. So a property manager should at least present three, uh, three prospective tenants to you uh, and then give you the lowdown on on each and then you can sort of choose which one but they will also recommend which they'll choose as well so they'll sort of help guide you in that within that respect uh it also helps of, of course buying in the right area if you're buying an investment grade property investment grade location you're likely to uh, you know to buy a uh, to have better tenants but, uh, particularly if you're buying in areas that are uh, owner occupied so you're going to get tenants that are sort of more house proud looking after their properties more uh, than if you're buying in in you know, lower socioeconomic areas uh, so that that's a uh, important thing to consider as well Lloyd we've we've discussed the importance of a property manager 
uh, particularly for people that are, you know, geographically distant to the property they've purchased. Uh, obviously, this service comes at a cost. What is the general rule of thumb when looking for, for a managing agent in terms of what fees should people expect to pay? What should they be looking for in terms of any hidden fees or cost? As, as we generally find that management fees might vary across different companies. Is, is, is there uh, some advice around uh, that? Yeah, I guess my first, my first advice is try not to negotiate too much on fees. You know, people want to pay as less as possible. But what's really important is that your property is actually getting looked after. And if you're trying to negotiate too much, then you, you might run the risk of them not looking after your property as well as you might like them to. So just, just be aware of that would be my first bit of advice. Uh, and also property management fees do vary. Uh, so, for example, they're, they're cheaper in Sydney. Uh, so generally you can get fees for, you know, 5 5.5% in Sydney uh, or even less, whereas they're a bit higher in other cities. Uh, but in Sydney, because the, the, you know, the prices are, uh, of rent are quite high, so the, uh, the management fees can be cheaper because they're still getting uh, quite good rent there. Uh, but a bit like when we're looking at the package deals that, uh, say, you get out of a uh, like a, an interest rate from a bank or something, the same with a property manager just to see just check out what other what else is included uh and see if you've got to pay anything else above that percentage whether you've got to pay any monthly sundries for statements or anything like that so you've got to get a total understanding of of everything that's included uh, and sometimes it might be better to pay six percent for your fees if it's including everything and no, nothing else to pay rather than just paying four percent that sounds really good but then you've got to pay you know xyz monthly fees and things and given that there is a, particularly in, in metropolitan areas of the country, there's a lot of choice out there in terms of uh, managing agents. And, and you know, it's, it's very often that you'll hear, uh, a, you know, a positive story or a negative story or experience that somebody's had with a managing agent. What do you look for when advising clients um, to ensure that they're in good hands? Yeah, I look for property managers who actually uh, ex- I guess specialize in managing properties. So rather than just someone who's attached to a real estate agency and which is sometimes can be seen as the poor cousin of a real estate agent, someone who is actually specializes in property management and, and that's actually the core of their business, I think is quite important. And also if they've got properties themselves in their own portfolio, then they you know that can often be seen as they they will um, you know be able to look after your property a little bit better because uh, you want someone to look after your property as if it's their own property. Uh, and uh, I think looking at how many properties they've got on their rent roll too. So you don't want a property manager that's got way too many properties for them to handle. So you need to ask a few questions there to make sure that you're actually getting you know, getting a good deal there and you're getting someone who's actually going to be able to give attention to your property. Some great advice there, Lloyd. And I think just in addition to that, it all comes back down to asking the right questions when interviewing managing agents. Uh, the importance of a managing agent that's across changes in legislation. Uh, so over the past few years, uh, without going to too much detail, you know, we've seen model bylaws change um, in strata plans and, you know, uh, the, there's been a lot of conversation around the relevance of pets in buildings and the, the whole process behind that. It's really important that you've got a managing agent that is constantly up to speed with changes to legislation uh, so that you're never putting yourself in a position where you could possibly... Um, have a tenant declined, which otherwise would have been a suitable, uh, you know, prospect, uh, or possibly any other issues which could be bred as a result. Yeah, absolutely, very true. Thanks so much for your time today, Lloyd. Yeah, no problems, Alex. There we go. We've discussed the dream team in this episode, and you now know who are the people you need in your corner to ensure that you have every tool in your toolkit to successfully build wealth and a portfolio of investment properties. Lloyd covers off on these professionals and their roles in far greater detail in his new book, Positively Geared. Available now for pre-sale with a 1st of April release date. I strongly encourage you to get a copy of Lloyd's new book so that you too can achieve your financial freedom.